Splash is sitting on the shelf by the window and look at Nancy. Look at this. Nancy! Stella, Splash, Simba, Boo, Sammy, Richard, Nancy, Goldie, Ziggy, Ringo, Eva, Hydrox, and Ditto. The Lucky Pharaohs. Look at what's going on here. Do you see this? Richard has his arm around Ziggy and Nancy's laying on top of Ziggy. The three of them are laying together on this chair. I'm coming downstairs to give them dinner for the second time because when I came downstairs a half hour ago to give them dinner, the three of them were laying together on this chair and I didn't want to disturb them, but they're still laying together. Look at them. I just realized, okay, no, it is Ziggy. I thought maybe that was Goldie and Ziggy for sure. Do you guys want dinner? You want to eat? You want some food? You guys hungry? Meanwhile, across the room, there are three cats in the beds. Sammy is on the cat tower near the windows. Look at these guys. They're so happy together. If Nancy is the mom, that means this is Nancy with two of her babies. Do you guys want to eat dinner or not? You just want to hang out here? You're just in the mood to relax? It's been that kind of day. It was rainy and cold today. Although for the end of December, it was kind of warm. I think it was in the high 40s or low 50s. But it was definitely rainy and gray. Tomorrow's supposed to be the same. So it would be a good day to take a nap. Okay, guys. Let's eat. Let's eat. Today I had to go mail out my hard drive that failed. I got a return authorization for it uh, for data recovery. And they sent me a prepaid uh, shipping label. So I had to take it and drop it off at UPS. And there is a local market near there. So I stopped in there and they have London Broil for three ninety nine dollars a pound. So I picked up three of those, which will be enough for three meals for the cats. Then I add some organ meats and some supplements and 
They love it. So everyone upstairs already ate, and these guys down here need to eat. It is 3.30 p.m. There's Nancy on the left, and there's Richard on the right. They're hanging out in the cat towers here while I get some work done. I am working on my computer on the dining room table, just trying to get some end of the year administrative stuff done. There's Stella. She's been hanging out under the Christmas tree today. I've been hearing some hissing and growling coming from this area, but so far there have not been any fights or anything. I think she's just you know, defending her territory against anyone who comes near her. And here are my three big boys. So we have Simba, Splash, and there's Boo. They're taking happy naps this afternoon. Here's Sammy. How you doing, Sammy? For breakfast today, the cats had a combination of Stella and Chewy's raw food and then also some homemade raw food. I'm trying to use up what's left in my freezers and then starting fresh with the new year. There's little Eva. Hello, little Eva. There's Ziggy. She's on top of the cat tower. They're all taking their afternoon naps. And there's Goldie. She's on this chair. I'm not sure where Ringo is. He might be under here. Yeah, Ringo's under here. Hey, Ringo. Okay, Sammy. You could take a nap too, Sammy. It's about 3 p.m. There's Splash and Stella They're laying on the bed together. Here's Boo. He's laying in his favorite spot on the bed. And there's Simba. Simba's on top of the cat tower. So the window's open and it's been open since I left this morning. So I was gone for about three hours. I got a ton of stuff done. I just finished unloading everything, putting everything away. So like all the chicken parts and everything that I bought to make cat food, that's all in the refrigerator. And tomorrow is when I'll make all the cat food. And I put the two bags of frozen raw food that I bought in the freezer, so that'll be ready for future meals. I bought a bag of the Nature's Variety Instinct Raw Chicken Bites, and I also bought a bag of the Primal Raw Chicken and Salmon Nuggets. The cats haven't had that in a very long time, so um, we'll see if they like that. And it ends up costing about $9 a pound, actually more than $9 a pound, a little bit more than $9 a pound when I purchase pre-made commercial raw cat food. And when I make my own, it literally costs like less than a third of that or we could you know for simplicity's sake we could say it costs like a third of that so it's so much cheaper to make my own cat food but sometimes it is nice to have the convenience of the pre-made food so that's what's going on i also got a little bit of grocery shopping done while i was out and i ran a few other errands and had a little bit of lunch so Overall, it was a very good use of time, right, Boo? Something else that I should mention is that when I buy the commercial raw cat food that's already made, I have to pay sales tax on that. But if I buy chicken parts and make my own cat food, then I don't have to pay any sales tax on that because there is no sales tax here on non-prepared foods. So um, that actually saves me more than 6%. It saves me 6.625% in the cost of uh, cat food because all, all pet food is taxed. Personally, I don't think pet food should be taxed. I don't think human food should be taxed. And I know that it's taxed in a few states. And I also don't think that pet food should be taxed. Right, Boo? Boo says right. It's 11.30 p.m. I just finished making two big batches of homemade raw food and each batch made eight meals for the cats. So it's a total of 16 meals, which will last 16 days if they eat it once a day and alternate it with like commercial raw food or it'll last eight days if they eat it for breakfast and dinner or somewhere between eight and 16 days, you know, depending on how many times a day they eat the homemade raw food. And all I want to do is like clean up right now. But Nancy has decided that she needs to be upstairs. So she's walking around upstairs right now. 
And Richard, who does not want to be away from her, has been crying at the door. I don't know if you could hear him on the other side. He's crying because he wants to be with Nancy. But I don't want to let him up because I want to clean up the kitchen and then I want to go to bed. It's already going to be like after midnight by the time I do that. And I don't need to be wrangling the two of them up to get them downstairs because I don't want them staying up here overnight when I can't supervise. He's whining. Here's Simba. He's been taking a nap in this cat tower. And here's Stella. She's on guard by the front door. She's keeping an eye on Nancy. And the cats had some crunchies a little while ago. That's why the plate is still there. Splash is sitting on the shelf by the window. And look at Nancy. Look at this. Nancy! He's growling at her. Get down, Nancy. Good thing I walked into the room when I did. All right, go downstairs. Go downstairs because you don't need to bother cats, Nancy, okay? It's late. I want to clean up the kitchen and go to bed, okay? Let's go to bed, Nancy. I sometimes get questions about the plates that the cats eat on, so I thought I would film this video and show you what they've been eating on for quite some time now. I just got my order in and I ordered three cases of these. Each case has 1,000 plates and these are six inch round plates. The brand is Echo Choice and these are made out of sugarcane fiber. They are compostable, biodegradable, and microwavable, but I don't use a microwave, so that doesn't apply to me. And I'm feeding 11 cats a day, so I go through about 22 plates a day. And so this case will last me about 45 days. And I just got three cases of these. So these will last us for about four months. And this is what they look like inside. So they come in smaller uh, bags. And there's 125 plates in each bag. What I do is I take these and I put them all on a shelf in my storage room downstairs and I fill up the shelf with these and then when I get down to like the last bag or two then I place another order. So I've been ordering these for quite some time now. I usually order them two times a year or maybe three times a year and they've been working out really really good. And because they are only six inches wide, they are a perfect size for a cat. When I used to buy paper dessert plates in local stores, they're actually a little bit bigger than these are. The only other paper plates that I've purchased that are a comparable size to these are those like really thin, flimsy um, paper plates that you can get like a stack of them for a reasonable price. I, I believe they're like uncoated paper plates. The problem with those is they don't really hold meals well. Those are good for crunchies, like if I'm giving the cats dry food, but when I'm giving them a meal with like raw food and wet food, I need something that's gonna, you know, hold up and these hold up really, really great. Now the cats do also have some stainless steel plates that I can use for them. I also have some shallow ceramic bowls I can use for them or some ceramic plates, but for convenience, for saving time, for easy cleanup, I mean, these can't be beat. These are like the best plates that I've tried and I just wanted to make this video and let you know about them. I will put a link to the website where I purchased these in the description below this video and also in the comment section. And here's Nancy, she said she approves them. It's 5.45 p.m. and here's Stella, Splash, and Simba. And I keep trying to explain to Splash and Simba that they have five sisters because Nancy is in the room with them just a few minutes ago. And I came in the room and she was on the cat tower and then she walked out of the room and someone was growling at her. I think it was Boo. There's Boo on the other side of the bed. Do you see him? So she was walking around here and she was stopping on the floor beneath these three, looking up at them. And I was explaining to them that she is their sister. And I was telling Splash and Simba that they have five sisters because it's always just been the two of them, you know, the two brothers. They have five sisters and two more brothers. That's a lot of cats, guys. And I told Stella she has sisters. 
because, you know, Stella's always been the only girl. I said, Stella, you have five other sisters in this house. So there's six girls and five boys for a total of 11 cats. Nancy's trying to go in my closet. Nancy, get out of the closet. Get out of the closet, Nancy. Come on out. Come on out. Get out. Come on, she's standing on a bunch of shoes. Come on out. It's 10.43 p.m. Look at what's going on here. Stella and Nancy are eating crunchies together. Well, they were. I don't know why Nancy's walking away. These are what's left over from dinner plates from an hour or two ago. And I just opened this tub of crunchies. And Stella and Nancy were eating it together. There's Stella. And here's Nancy. She's been upstairs with the big cats for a while now. And I just asked her if she wants to go downstairs, but she doesn't. She wants to stay up here. But I told her, I said, Nancy... You're welcome to stay up here as long as you're good and you don't cause any problems. I said, the minute you cause a problem with anyone else, you're going downstairs. Right, Nancy? So if you're on good behavior, you can have your privilege of being up here. You can have your privilege, okay? They're eating crunchies together just a little bit farther apart. That's what Nancy wanted. She wasn't too happy being that close to Stella. But I think it's good that they're eating crunchies together. I don't want to jinx anything. So not even two minutes later and Nancy misbehaved and she just went downstairs. So I was leaving the room to go back to the living room and Stella was trying to follow me and then Nancy hissed at her and lunged at her. So I just shouted like, stop it. And then I was like, Nancy, you want to go downstairs? So she went downstairs and this is what happens if I give her praise. Then it goes to her head and then she misbehaves. It's 11.30 a.m. Here's Stella. It is the first day of the new year, and I just let the kittens upstairs. Stella just saw Nancy and Richard. Here's Nancy. And what I want to do today is see what happens if I let all the cats just mingle all day. So we've been on a schedule where they get, you know, some time in the evening to mingle with each other. So today, since I don't have to go anywhere and I don't have any work that I absolutely have to get done, I thought I would see what would happen if the cats spent a full day together. So here's Simba. He's on my bed. Here's Boo. He's finishing his breakfast here. So as a treat for breakfast, the cats had friskies because it's a holiday. Today's New Year's Day. So that's what they have. Splash is under the bed. And this is something new that I'm trying for the new year. And this is a meal plan for the cats. So this is just like a really cheap dry erase board that I had from the Dollar Tree. And I've just been using it to keep notes on it with regards to like booze dermatitis and the flea situation. Like when I was giving the cats medicine, stuff like that. So I just erased it this morning and then I just made a really quick meal plan outline for the cat. So today is Monday the 1st. They had canned food for breakfast, and for dinner they're going to have homemade raw food, homemade raw chicken. And then tomorrow they're going to have some instinct bites for breakfast and homemade raw chicken for dinner. Wednesday they're going to have primal nuggets for breakfast and homemade raw chicken for dinner. Thursday, more of the instinct bites for breakfast. Usually I could get two meals out of a bag, so that'll be the end of the bag. And then they'll have the homemade raw chicken for dinner. And then Friday, I have some homemade raw quail. And I think they'll have that on Friday with some chunky beef. I have a London broil in my freezer. And they'll have that for dinner. Now, on the weekend, I'm not sure. So I just kind of left Saturday and Sunday morning blank. And then I just put homemade raw for dinner. And, and as the week progresses, I'll see 
um, like what I have if I go food shopping before then and pick up something. I'm basically trying to get more variety into the cats. Their favorite food right now is the homemade raw chicken that I make for them. They absolutely love that. They all eat it. Um, they also love like chunky beef or chunky chicken. They honestly prefer like the homemade raw food to any of the store-bought food. But the store-bought food does save me a little bit of time and it helps to extend the homemade raw food that I make for them. So that's why I've decided to try a meal plan and see how we can like alternate and cycle through some of the different foods. I think it's also a good idea for them to occasionally eat the commercial food because if I'm in a situation where I can't make homemade raw food for a while, then at least I'll know which ones that they like, which ones that they don't like, stuff like that. So we're trying this out. We're seeing how it goes. I've been using like a tentative meal plan for the past week or two and it's been working that way. So I think just having this here as a general outline could definitely save me time. Here's Nancy and Sammy by the window in Boo's room. I had all the windows open this morning and then I shut them because when the kittens come upstairs, I still don't really trust them near windows. So I shut it so they could still smell air, but they're not gonna be able to like, you know, claw at the screen and get out. One of my major goals for 2024 is to get more organized and to find more ways to manage my time more efficiently and, you know, basically save myself time doing like daily tasks and weekly tasks and monthly tasks and stuff like that. I find the more I could get into a set routine and find um, something that works, that's usually the best thing. So once again, I'm just trying to refine cat management for 2024. 2023 was basically a year of transition because I had no plans of keeping seven more cats. I was perfectly happy with the four that I had and I did not want any more cats than that. But what happened was when all of the lucky seven were rescued and then went through their training and socializing process, I realized how bonded they all are to each other. And some people will say, well, it's okay. You could separate the cats. They'll get over it. And my reply to that is why separate them if I don't have to? If I could give them the gift and luxury of staying together as a family, why not do that? One thing I've never wanted to do in my life is just do whatever everyone else is doing. I've never been that kind of person to just follow the crowd or just to do something because other people do it or do something just because that's the way things have always been done. I've been much more of the person who says, well, why don't we try something new or the person who questions pretty much everything, well, why is it that way? And why is this? And why is that? And I think more people need to question more things and not just blindly accept things and say, okay, well, that's the way things are done. So that's the way I have to do them. That's not the case at all. So once I realized how bonded and attached the lucky seven were to each other, I thought, why not give it a try? Like, why not try to keep them together? And why not try to integrate them into one big family with my other cats? And why not see what happens and give them a chance? And what I find is that sometimes it makes me think more like a rescue organization would think than a typical cat parent would think because taking care of 11 cats is a lot of work and it's also a lot of expense and it's a completely different mindset than taking care of four cats. Taking care of four cats is pretty much the same mindset as any cat parent would have but once you get into like double digits like 11 cats it's a completely different mindset Someone's growling. Oh, I think it's Boo. Boo's growling and he's hissing 
because Nancy is creeping into the room. She's creeping into the room. She's okay as long as she does not try to attack anyone. If she does, she's going downstairs. She's going to ruin it for all the other cats. So what I was saying is that with 11 cats, what happens is that the mindset changes because everything has to be done in bulk. When I buy a case of cat food, I have to think, well, how many meals is this going to last for? Sometimes it'll only last for like two or three meals, depending on how big the case of food is and how big the cans of food are. So being able to make my own homemade cat food has been a complete blessing because I only have to think in terms of like one and a half pounds of food per meal or three pounds of food per day versus do I need 11 cans for this meal? Do I need 22 cans for the day? That kind of stuff. It's a completely different mindset. And even with litter, I have to keep in mind, well, how many bags of litter do I have and how many do I need? Boo's still growling. There's Nancy. Nancy's a very brave cat. Out of all the cats, I think she really wants to be part of the group with the older cats. Even more so than Sammy. There's Nancy, she's on the cat tower. So there's two reasons why Nancy could be going onto this cat tower. Well, there's three reasons. Um, one, just because she likes being on top of a cat tower. Two, because she wants to smell the air outside and look out the window because it is open a little bit. Or three, because she wants to be up higher than the other cats and kind of exert dominance on them. As long as she behaves, everything is fine. It's 12.05 p.m. and look at Sammy, she's in a box. She's so funny. It is 2.41 p.m. And here are the OG4 on the bed. This is their favorite place to be during the day. The door has been open all day. Nancy's been in and out. I'm assuming some of the other cats have been in and out. And so far, everyone's been getting along. Here's Nancy, she's resting in this cat tower. Ringo's walking around up here. But I don't want to spook him, so I don't want to put the camera on him. Sammy's up here. Ziggy's up here. Uh, quite a few of the cats are up here. I'm going to try to get my cat chores done early today. Meaning um, refilling all the water bowls and scooping all the litter. Um, I vacuumed yesterday, so I don't think I need to vacuum today. But just doing some um, general cleanup. There's Ringo. How you doing, Ringo? I'm trying to adjust my schedule so that I'm not up so late at night and I am up earlier in the morning. Like, I want to be able to start my day when the sun comes up. So I want to actually wake up a little bit before sunrise. And so what I'm going to try to do tonight is get to bed earlier so that I could wake up earlier tomorrow. What has happened over the past month or two is that somehow my schedule has gotten shifted so that I am up like super late at night and then I always end up like sleeping in until at least eight o'clock, sometimes nine o'clock, just so I could get enough sleep to function properly during the day. And that means like only getting like six hours of sleep. I've been pretty much going on six hours of sleep and that's been okay, but Ideally, what I would like to do is get on a better schedule where I'm getting up earlier and then going to bed at like a normal hour, which would be by 11 p.m. I think that would be much better than being up until like 2, 3 a.m. every night. So 
that's the goal for today. And in order to do that, that means I need to get the cat chores out of the way earlier in the day or earlier in the evening. And so that's why I'm going to try to do that now. It's about 4.20 p.m. And there's Nancy and Ziggy and Sammy's under the chair and Richard was just here. And this has become like an afternoon activity. Um, the It's usually the girls from the Lucky Seven that like to gather in the kitchen. Today Richard was here also. Sometimes it's Ziggy. Sometimes it's also Goldie and Eva. And sometimes it's Ringo. So I guess it's all of them at, at some point. Um, but they like to gather in the kitchen. I'm trying to um, get things cleaned up a little bit. That's a breakfast plate right there, and then someone had a snack. And again, I'm trying to get them on an earlier schedule, so I'm actually debating giving them their dinner early or like earlier than usual. Here's Simba, Splash, and Boo. Stella has moved to the top of the armoire. I'm gonna shut the window now. And yeah, the door's been open all day. Everyone has been free to mingle with each other, and so far, so good. It is 10.30 a.m. and here's Simba. Let me tell you what Simba did to me last night. So I went to bed early. My plan worked really good and I was in bed by around 10. I didn't fall asleep till around 11, but it was still good. And Simba woke me up three times overnight. Each time he woke me up, it was when he was headbutting me in the nose. Simba headbutts me so hard, I feel like he's gonna break my nose. So then I would like put my hands in front of my face and he would find a way to headbutt like my cheek or my chin or something and he wouldn't stop. And I was like, Simba, what do you want? So I would, you know, be half asleep. I'd be giving him pets and he just kept insisting. So finally I had to give him like a few crunchies. Then he would stop for a while and then he'd go back and do it again and he would be okay for a few hours. And then he would do it again. And the next thing I knew, I, I was being woken up by a cat headbutting me in the face. And I'd be like, Simba, what is going on? So I'd have to give him a few crunchies. And then he'd let me fall asleep again for a while. And then he'd wake me up again. Happened three times overnight. Simba, you have to give me some peace when I'm sleeping, okay? Don't wake me up when I'm sleeping. Simba says it's my fault because I didn't give them crunchies before I went to bed. And it is my fault because because of Christmas, they've been getting extra crunchies because I was like, oh, I'm eating all kinds of junk food. So I'm going to give the cats extra crunchies and snacks and everything. So they've gotten used to it. It's 1.45 p.m. and the girls have brought themselves into the kitchen for their afternoon snack. They love hanging out in the kitchen in the afternoon. There's Goldie. There's Sammy. Ziggy's under the chair. Nancy's in the hallway. They all just had a little bit of a snack. That's it. It is 9.45 p.m. and the cats are having a crunchy snack. There's Boo, Stella, Splash, and Simba. And look who's with them. Look at the top left-hand corner of the screen. That's Nancy. Nancy wanted to come upstairs be with the older cats. So I let her up and she's been okay so far. I don't want to jinx anything. But I wanted to see what would happen if I gave her some crunchies with the other cats. She's, you know, a little off in the distance. Boo! What's going on, Boo? Oh, Boo ate his and he wants more. All right, guys. Boo's a little tense because Nancy's here. Don't try to eat Nancy's crunchies, Boo. Every time I turn a camera on a situation where I feel like, you know, Nancy's being good, then everything turns and she ends up doing something wrong or someone else ends up doing something wrong. Hopefully in this case, Boo won't start attacking her. All right, you guys want more crunchies? They're not supposed to be having crunchies. Because, you know, holiday time has passed, but I really just wanted to see what would happen with Nancy. Nancy. 
Nancy's howling. There's nature videos on behind me on the TV. Splash and Simba have moved away because they don't want to be near Nancy. But Boo and Stella are here. I don't know why Nancy's not eating her crunchies. She's just staring at Boo. Looking at Stella. Nancy, eat your crunchies. Nancy, eat your food. Look at this. Is Boo going to turn his back on her? What? Look at that. Look at that. Boo's turning his back on her. That's a nervy move. I'm watching her body language and so far she looks okay, but again, I don't want to jinx anything. One thing about having multiple cats, it really helps keep your reflexes quick. You're okay, Boo, you done? I'm looking for signs of movement in her tail and her hindquarters. And again, I don't want to jinx anything, so I'm afraid to say anything. Look at that. Who's looking at her? But other than looking at her, you know, briefly, his back is pretty much just turned to her. Nancy, what are you doing? Nancy, you want to go downstairs? Let me tell you, Boo had a really big dinner tonight. So all the cats had homemade raw food, um, homemade chicken. And then afterwards, I gave, I gave the upstairs cats some steak. I had some leftover London broil from the other day. So I cut up some small pieces and Boo ended up eating quite a bit of it. I, mean, I thought that was it, but now he's eating a bunch of crunchies, so hopefully no one will wake me up tonight. I was thinking of going downstairs and laying on the couch down there and, you know, falling asleep for a little while. But I gotta get Nancy down there before I do anything. What are you doing, Nancy? You being a good girl? You looking at Boo? You looking at your older brother, Boo? That's your older brother, Boo, Nancy. You relaxing? Or are you getting ready to jump? What are you doing? Hmm? You want your crunchies? It's not like Nancy to not eat crunchies. So far, Boo has finished three of the plates. What are you doing, Nancy? Being a good girl, Nancy? You're a good girl, right? You're a good girl and you love your brother, Boo, right? You love all your older brothers and sisters. Right, Nancy? Look at her face. She's not blinking at all. 
Look at her tail's going now. Boo's looking at her. Eat that. There's Boo's growling a little bit. It's 9 a.m. Look at Simba. Look how he's laying in that cat tower. He looks like he's very comfortable. He's getting some nice morning sunshine. And thankfully he did not wake me up last night. So I was able to get some good sleep. Here's Boo. Boo slept well also. So last night I decided that I was going to try to sleep downstairs on the couch. I wasn't going to pull out the bed. I was just going to sleep on the couch, see how that went. Well, it didn't go very well because when I first went down there, I was playing with the cats with the wand toy. Maybe that hyped them up a little too much because they were just making a lot of noise. There was so much activity down there because, you know, there's seven young cats down there, so they have a lot of energy. And there was no way I was going to be able to fall asleep. I was trying so hard to fall asleep. I was so tired, but I just couldn't fall asleep. So finally, around midnight, I was like, okay, I tried. I'm going to come back up here. So I came back up here, and then I, I slept the rest of the night in my bed. I woke up probably around 7.30, um, and then... I ended up just looking at my phone and emails and watching videos and, you know, before you know it, an hour goes by. So I'm trying to get ready for my day now and kind of disappointed because I want to get myself on an earlier schedule. So the fact that I was waking up at 730 was really good. I just need to get myself out of bed. Like when I wake up, I need to just get out of bed and start my day instead of, you know, grabbing a mobile device and looking at emails and stuff, so maybe I gotta put them in another room. It's 10, 15 a.m. and I wanted to show you what Richard did last night. So this is the wand toy the cats have been playing with. This is their favorite wand toy. And as you can see, or maybe you can't see, because I know it's hard to see, but there's this clear string attached to it, and there's nothing attached to this clear string, because last night, Richard bit it. He did exactly what Simba does, which is why I have to keep these clear strings away from Simba, because Simba bites them in half, and that's what Richard did. He bit this in half, and I don't know where the toy is that was attached to it. He did this just as I was trying to fall asleep last night, and I was like, okay, well, I guess that's a sign to stop playing with them and get some sleep. So I'm going to have to look for the other toy part and I really need to find the fishing line this is like fishing wire fishing line whatever it's called um, I remember purchasing this at some point to replace like this situation like when it's broken I just need to like learn how to do the crimping and stuff Richard why did you break the toy and where's the other part of it Where's the birdie part? Hey, Sammy. Sammy, where's the other part of the toy? Where did it go? Hey, Ziggy. Richard, Richard, where's the toy? Where's the toy part? Where's the toy part, Richard? This is Ziggy. Hey, Ziggy. Hey, Sammy. Sammy, where's the toy part? The scratching post on the right, this one, with the round base, is a new scratching post for the cats. I just got it at Home Goods um, just a few days before New Year's. And the reason why I got it is because it's taller than a typical scratching post. 
they have this one, this much taller one, and yeah, as you can see, they've um, really scratched off a lot of the uh, rope that's been on it. And then they had another one about the same size, maybe a little bit smaller, that had like um, two toys attached to the top of it. So when I saw this one, I thought it would be a really good replacement for the one that I ended up throwing out. The reason why I threw it out was because this one I think can be like restrung with rope. But the other one, I mean, they had taken all the rope off and they had pretty much destroyed what the rope was on also. So that's why I figured, you know, this was $29.99 for that price. It's just so much easier to buy a new one than to buy, you know, the replacement rope and then spend a bunch of time gluing it on or attaching it however it needs to be attached. So um, I got this at Home Goods. So if anyone is in uh, the need of a new scratching post, check out your local Home Goods because they had a bunch near mine, like a whole bunch of them. I'm looking for the birdie near Sammy's tunnels. She wants to make sure that I don't disturb them. Richard, where's the birdie? Where'd you put the birdie, Richard? Where is it? I just found the bird, so here's their favorite bird. And I don't even know if I could reattach this with like a knot or anything. Look at Sammy, she was just sitting in the middle of this tunnel. Now that the holidays are over, I'm supposed to put this tunnel away for next Christmas because it's like a Christmas themed tunnel. I might keep it out because she enjoys it so much. It's almost 1 p.m. Look at what's going on here. Nancy's on the left, and Richard and Sammy are on the right. And it looks like Richard's been grooming Sammy. If Richard was a human, he would be a hairdresser. He loves grooming everyone, even humans. Sammy's making room for him. She's like, you could lay down next to me. It's 1.45 p.m. Here's Sammy. Hey, Sammy. Here's Nancy. Hey, Nancy. Here's Ringo. Hey, Ringo. There's Richard. Hey, Richard. 
And somebody's laying in the curtains. I think it's Ziggy. Can you see the silhouette? So who are we missing? We're missing Eva and Goldie. Here's Boo. There's Simba. There's Stella. They're all taking a nap. And there's Splash. So right now, five cats are in cat towers. Three are on the bed. One's on top of a sofa cushion. I don't know where the other two are. It is 6.35 p.m. There is Nancy near the tree. Stella's walking around. Ziggy is in the dining room. And the boys are on the bed, meaning Simba, Splash, and Boo. And I'm just about to start taking the tree down because tomorrow will be six weeks since I've had this tree. And that's a really long time. Actually, is it more than six weeks? I just checked a calendar and confirmed that, yeah, tomorrow will be six weeks. And I stopped watering the tree a few days before Christmas when it stopped drinking. And now um, t I think today is like January 4th. And I just touched some branches and I mean, the needles are just falling off in my hand. So it's definitely time to take the tree down. And I think if I put it outside tonight, um, the town will actually pick it up tomorrow, which will be good. So it won't be just hanging around outside. So I got to go down to my storage room, get all my boxes and start taking ornaments off. It's 10.20 a.m. I just looked outside and saw this. I can't zoom in any farther with this camera, but do you see what I see? There's a cat sitting there, and it's been staring at this window, because when I looked out, it was staring at me. It must hear activity in this room. I don't know if that's Bob. Um, maybe? I mean, this cat does not look hungry. This cat looks well fed. It could be that it's just visiting the downstairs cats like the Lucky Seven because they were very interested in what was going on outside of one of the windows just before I gave them breakfast. And that's probably why he's probably just visiting. This is the cat that my neighbors down the road feed and take care of. It's 12.30 p.m. I wanted to show you little Eva because she was so pretty by the windows. Richard's meowing. Nancy's meowing. Sammy's here. Eva's trying to walk past me. There she goes. <laughs> so I open the windows in the morning and then I shut them so they're just a little bit open until it gets too cold in the house, which it is. So I just put the heat on. I'm going to shut this window, but I was waiting for them to like stop enjoying the fresh air. But look, now they're back. I have the heat on anyway. Hello. That's how Nancy whines. You okay? That's Ringo and little Eva. So yesterday I took the tree down and I cleaned up um, as best as I could. I vacuumed a lot, there are a lot of needles. And so now I have this um, open area here. And so today the cats are getting used to the tree being gone again. Okay, who wants their snack? This is what they want. You're gonna get some of these bench and field treats. Whenever I come into the kitchen, like around lunchtime, they try to get treats out of me. Who wants it? There. Here's Ziggy. I 
I just realized that little Eva was here. Is she going to get a treat? Eva, you want a treat? No, nope, Sammy's going to eat them all. Look at this. Look. Little Eva's right here. Oh, that's my finger, Ziggy. So li little Eva still has not eaten a treat out of my hand. She'll eat some of the wet cat food, but I don't even have any of that wet cat food left. But it's good, but it's a good sign that she's at least interested, like here. Sammy eats them faster than I can give them out. Here, Eva. Eva. See, if, if I try to throw it to Eva, then um, like one of the other cats will grab it. Okay, Goldie, you want one? Here. It's Ziggy. Here, Goldie. Okay, that's it. Goldie. Are you going to eat that one? <laughs> Goldie plays hockey with the trees. Here, Eva. Okay, I gave one to Eva, and I think she's getting it. Yeah, she got it. So what do I have here is, like, all five girls. And this is what I was saying. The girls love to congregate in the kitchen. It's the girls in the kitchen in the afternoon. Sometimes it's Ringo, sometimes it's Richard, but it's usually the girls. Okay, you've had enough. Everyone has had enough treats, okay? Okay, we're good? Is it, maybe Eva could have one more. She only had one. Everyone else had multiple. Let Eva have it. Let Eva have it. She's over there. Okay, Eva got two. That's good. Okay, everyone else is done. This is not a meal. This is a snack, okay? That was a good snack. Good snack. Now go play somewhere. You want to put a toy on for you? Here's Richard. This is one of his favorite places for an afternoon nap. He says he's ready for his nap. Just put the toys on. It's a little after 3 p.m. and I was just outside and I realized that the water in the large water bowl on the side of my house was frozen. So I went in the garage and got this large heated water bowl and I plugged it in and I have it here on the patio. Um, the reason why I put it here versus like on the side of the house or something is so that the cats can see like whoever's coming to drink out of it. And they'll get a view from either Boo's room or uh, downstairs. They could see this from one of the windows downstairs. And I think maybe even from one of the windows in my room, they could see this, I'm not sure, but they could obviously see it from the back door. And there's some bird seed that was on the patio um, to the left of it. So I put some bird seed out yesterday and nobody ate it until today. And the cats love watching you know, birds on the patio. So that's why I put the bird seed out, and that's why I put the heated water bowl out. I figured during the day the water bowl will attract birds, squirrels, like, you know, whoever's out during the day. And then at night, it'll probably attract, like, other cats. And then I've also seen, like, you know, the typical skunks, possums, raccoons use it. But I don't know if they're going to still use it because I have not been putting food out for any cats. And, you know, there's remarkably less cats in the neighborhood now. So the other thing that I did yesterday was I charged the two security cameras that I normally have out in the patio. So I'm going to go replace them today, put them out there. We'll see what happens overnight if anyone comes by. It is 7.35 p.m. and it is snowing. This is the first snow that we've had this season so far. I'm not happy about it at all, but hopefully it'll turn to rain soon because we are right on the rain snow line. So the forecast was for like little to no accumulation and then the weather's gonna warm up and hopefully melt it. And the same thing for tomorrow. Like this weather is supposed to last all the way through tomorrow. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed that uh, it starts raining soon and melts all the snow because I'm not a fan of snow. But I am happy that I put out the heated water bowl. I don't know if you could see it because the window is starting to fog up. But the, 
but the heated water bowl is on the patio. It's not frozen, which is good. And I was looking at the security cameras that I put outside, um, I think it was yesterday, and there are a few cats that have been coming around and drinking water out of the water bowl. I don't know if they've been using the cat shelter that I have in the corner there. So the cat shelter under the house is not open. That has not been open since Hydrox was in it or when Ditto was here. After Ditto came inside, I shut that cat shelter. But the other cat shelter that I have, the one in the doghouse, that's outside. That has straw in it. And I just keep that open for like whoever wants to use it. I have not seen anyone using it though. So um, that's the situation. I know this window is fogging up. And if you look at what's going on here, to the left we have the steps going downstairs. And to the right we have one step going up to the kitchen. And the door between the upstairs and downstairs is open. And it's been open pretty much all day since I got back from purchasing cat supplies this morning. And all the cats have been on free roam together, which has been nice. Here's Boo, he's in his room. He's looking out of the window. Can you see a silhouette near the window? And somebody is in the cat tower. I think Nancy is in the cat tower. So let's turn on the lights and see what's going on. It's Sammy. Sammy's in the cat tower. And that would make more sense because Boo gets along with Sammy. And Sammy gets along with everyone. Sammy, there's snow outside. Are you watching the snow from here? I don't know if Sammy has ever seen snow before because last year we didn't really get snow. And she came inside in the beginning of October. So she spent all of last winter inside. And I don't think she was even alive for the previous winter so last winter was her first winter and she spent it inside as well as all of her brothers and sisters and the only cats that might have experienced a winter outside would be Ringo and Nancy if the two of them are the parents then they would have potentially experienced a winter outside because the estimate is that the kittens were born in like the end of March, um, potentially based on like their sizes when they first came around. So maybe Ringo and Nancy were born like the previous summer. Um, that would be my guess because, you know, they're super young also. I think they were just like really, really young parents if they are the parents. Hey, you and Sammy, you just want to relax? Okay, I'll shut the light. I'll shut the light and stop bothering you. Okay. Here's somebody's on the bed. So earlier today, we did have some growling and hissing issues uh, between Simba and Richard and Simba and Nancy and Boo and Nancy. Um, but... There were no confrontations, like, it was just growling, hissing, and then the cats backed off. Like, thankfully, um, there were no fights, um, no issues. So that was good, and I would say it's a good day. The goal is for the cats to just get more and more comfortable with each other, and I keep telling Boo, I said, Boo, Nancy's your sister, Richard's your brother, I'm explaining the same thing to Simba, and vice versa, and, and of course, I've been explaining it to Stella. I want Stella to be excited by the fact that she has five sisters because Stella's been the only girl cat in this house for a long time. Right, Boo? Here's Stella. She's hanging out in the kitchen because I am just about to make them dinner. We're having homemade raw food, which is chunky chicken. And she, she's biting my knee. And so, yeah, Stella's looking forward to dinner. I don't know where the majority of the lucky seven are they're just like scattered around look at that so sammy was trying to walk downstairs but stella was in the way now sammy heard someone in the hall so she's like i'm gonna go downstairs it's 8 30 a.m and we're all sleeping in a little bit today because it's a really gray yucky day I just looked outside and look at this. Look, so this is where the heated water bowl is. 
See all those little footprints in the snow? So I don't exactly know what kind of animals those footprints belong to because, you know, it could be skunks, possum, raccoon, or it could be cats. But someone's been drinking water and it looks like some of the footprints lead to the shelter and some of them lead around the shelter. So, you know, it could be that nobody's going in the shelter. They're just going like around it. But there was a lot of activity on the patio last night. I just checked the security camera footage and it detected the big fat tabby uh, who walked across the patio twice, but that doesn't explain for like all of these footprints around here. The security camera showed the cat like walking from here to here, then again from here to here. So maybe it's been, um, you know, taking rounds of the whole yard. I don't know. Could be on patrol. And I might have to move the camera like closer to this area. Maybe that's why it's not picking things up. I have to see. Here's Splash. This is where he slept last night. He's still relaxing. Here's Stella. She's looking outside. Thankfully, the snow has turned to rain and everything looks like it's trying to melt outside, which is good. Here's Simba. I don't know how late the cats were up last night or if they were up this morning early, but right now they're still sleeping in. Now I should also mention that they did have crunchies last night and when they have crunchies at night, they are much more lethargic in the morning. This is what's going on downstairs. That's Sammy and Richard. They're still in bed. Here's Nancy. She likes Stella's royal bed because she's a princess. Here's Goldie. She's looking out the window. Here's Ringo. He's in the cat tower in the back room. And there are two cats in the window. That would be Ziggy and little Eva. They're looking at whatever Stella's looking at. And here's Boo. He slept on the bed last night. He got a ton of pets this morning. How you doing, Boo? It's 12.15 p.m. and here's Stella. And all the doors are open. All the cats are mingling. Boo's on my bed. Simba's on my bed. I think Splash is in my room somewhere. Stella's the only one that's out and about with the cats. And she claimed this spot before I let the cats out. So she's keeping an eye on them. She's making sure they know that she's queen of the house. Here's Nancy. Stella's growling a little bit right now, which is fine. So what's really interesting to me is that, you know, I've always said that Stella is the alpha, but she lets Boo think he's the alpha because Boo wants to be the alpha, but Stella's really the alpha. And what is happening as the cats are kind of integrating together is we're seeing Stella being more of an alpha than Boo. But it could just be because of Boo's dermatitis recently that he's being more cautious with the Lucky Seven I still call them like the little cats and the big cats, but Stella is much more putting the lucky seven in their place. What was really interesting um, was last night when I was getting ready to feed the cats, um, all the lucky seven were downstairs except for Richard. And he had to walk down the hall and through the kitchen to go downstairs and it was so funny because Stella and Simba were sitting in the kitchen. The two of them were like sitting next to each other. 
And there was like a corridor in front of them where Richard could like walk through to get downstairs. So that's what happened. And they just stood there like they're watching a parade. It was so funny. Stella's keeping an eye on things, making sure no one's misbehaving. It is 6 p.m. and here's Boo. And I'm trying to get the cats fed. And look who this is. It's Sammy. I think Sammy and Boo want to be friends. So what happened was Boo was sitting in the kitchen as I'm trying to get their dinner ready. And all of a sudden Sammy came upstairs and she was just meowing like a hello meow. And Boo started walking towards her. And I thought Boo was going to like, you know, kiss her. But he stopped a few feet away from her and he's just like ignoring her, which is good. So what I've noticed for quite some time now is that the lucky seven starts looking for food like they want their dinner when the sun starts going down. And of course, in the winter, the sun goes down so early. The sun's been going down, you know, between 430 and 445. So what I was trying to do today is get their dinner prepared earlier but it's been taking me a while to do that. I'm trying to get the camera on Boo, but he keeps moving around. But anyway, it's 6.20 right now, and I'm just about to feed them dinner. So it'll be a lot earlier than they've been eating recently, because recently they've been eating pretty late. But I do want to make a conscious effort to get them fed earlier. It's 6.45 p.m. This is a bag that I gave to the cats a few hours ago. And that's Nancy and Goldie. No one's in the back. Look at what's going on here. Three tabbies in the beds. On the left, it's Ringo. In the middle, it's little Eva. And on the right, it's Richard. They look so tired. And there's Sammy. And here's Ziggy, she's in the back room. Look at Nancy, she's so funny. This is a shopping bag and I cut the handles off of it earlier because I didn't want anyone getting their head caught in the handles. I'm ready to give everyone dinner, but they don't seem to be hungry right now. I'm gonna serve them dinner anyway. They look so comfy. So what I've noticed with uh, these cats is that if I play with them with a wand toy before they eat dinner, they work up an appetite. Even if I only play with them for like five or ten minutes, then they have much more of an appetite than if I don't play with them with a wand toy. So that's what I've been trying to do. Nancy, you want to play? Ziggy says she's ready to play.
It's 10 a.m. and here's Nancy and Richard. And Boo is in his room. That's the door to the left. And he's enjoying an open window. The, the window's open a few inches. There's Boo by the window. And I think Nancy and Richard want to go in there with him. But they've been keeping a respectable distance, which is nice. And all the doors in the house are open, so all the cats are free to mingle today. Here's Stella. She's on the bed. I'm in the process of doing laundry, so all the bedding is off the bed. I'm waiting for it to come out of the dryer. Then I'll make the bed up. And there's Simba. He's growling. This window's open also. It's really cold out right now, but it's supposed to warm up to about 44 degrees today, so hopefully the snow that we have will melt. But I do this every morning. I let a bunch of fresh air in, let the cat smell the fresh air, and then when it gets too cold, then I'll shut the windows and put the heat back on. I shut the heat off when I do this. Here's Nancy with the cat blankets. As long as she behaves and respects the other cats, then everything is good. I don't care if like they're growling and hissing at each other, as long as they behave. Cats are so funny. So I just put some canned food on the plates because Nancy was meowing and Boo came running from his room because he loves canned food. And then he was hissing at Nancy. Nancy was meowing at him. And then Stella came running because she heard Boo like growling and hissing. So then Stella and Boo kissed each other. And Sammy is underneath that little piece of furniture there. Nancy's over there in the door. And it's like a standoff right now. Like not, it's not like a, a serious standoff, but everyone's just kind of looking at each other. Someone's growling. I think Stella's growling. Yeah, she's hissing at Sammy. Stella, what are you doing? That's your sister. Stella, that's your sister, Sammy. That's your sister under there. Be nice to your sister. I don't think Sammy would attack Stella. Sammy's not that kind of cat. And I don't think Stella would attack Sammy. I think they're just trying to establish, you know, their relationships. Stella's establishing dominance. Because, you know, you have to remember, Stella's the alpha in the house. She lets Boo think he's the alpha, but as we just saw, when she heard Boo hissing and growling, Stella came running. It's 10.25 a.m., and look at this. That's Boo. He has not been in his office in a long time. I used to refer to this cat tower as Boo's office because he used to spend, like, the majority of his days there. He hasn't been there since before the fleas so we're talking since like early september so we're talking like four months ago so it'll be interesting to see what happens because nancy and richard have been enjoying these cat towers in the afternoon it's 10 45 a.m and i wanted to show you what was going on by this window but of course by the time i get the camera and come back they're gone there were five out of seven, five of the lucky seven were smelling the fresh air from this window. It was so cute. So what happened a few minutes ago was that Nancy was looking at Boo, like Boo's still in the cat tower in his office. And Nancy was on the floor looking up at him and he was like growling and hissing. I'm like, what's going on? And then I saw it was Nancy, and obviously she wanted to go on the cat tower next to him, but he, you know, wasn't happy with that. So I, I coaxed her into the living room because there's two cat towers in the living room, and I showed her the cat towers. I said, Nancy, go in one of these cat towers. I was actually able to pick her up and put her in a cat tower. She didn't want to be in the cat tower, but look where she is now. She's in this cat tower, and everyone's happy, and there are birds outside in the patio. That's what they've been watching because I did put some bird seed out yesterday. But I guess it was too late for the birds to eat it yesterday, so the birds are eating it today. And it is starting to get cold in the house, so I actually shut the open window in my bedroom. It's only open like a half inch now. And I would like to shut this one, but I can't because you know the cats are enjoying it, so I'll have to put another sweater on. Look at what's going on in here. There's five cats smelling the air. 
It's just like old times. When they first came in the house and they were all in this room together. Goldie's walking around the living room and Richard is near the window in my room. I can't zoom in any farther. They're so happy right now. They have sunshine because we haven't seen sunshine in days. They have fresh air. They're watching birds. Yeah, just like old times. It's hard to believe that it was over a year ago since they were all living in this room together, since they all had been trapped, spayed, neutered, and released into this room. I can't believe a whole year has gone by, like more than a year since that has happened. It's about 1.15 p.m. and I'm sitting here in the sun because it's really cold out and the sun is beautiful right here. I need to find the fabric that Zoe sent that I was using for Catnip Beach. What happened was when we had fleas, I put so much of the cat stuff in like storage tubs in my storage room downstairs that I don't know where anything is. Like I just wanted to put everything through the laundry. Here's Nancy. I wanted to put everything through the laundry and once it came out of the laundry, I just threw it in storage tubs. And I still have not gone through the majority of them yet. So that is on my to-do list. Right now I'm just taking like a five or 10 minute break to enjoy some sunshine. Boo's in his room and I had to shut the door because Nancy was, you know, howling at him and I didn't want any issues. And Richard was just chasing Splash around the house. So I shut the door to my bedroom. I made Richard leave the bedroom um, with the jingle bells. So if Richard is under the bed with Splash, which is where they were and then they were howling at each other, um, all I need to do is jingle the jingle bells and then Richard goes running out and Splash stays there so then I shut the door. So yesterday was a beautiful day. All the cats got along and then today um, they're not getting along as well. I mean for the most part they're getting along. There haven't been any big fights or anything but I've been trying to avoid the fights. So that's the situation. Right Nancy? Nancy's so funny. I think what's really happening with the cats is they're trying to test the boundaries with each other. They're trying to see what they could get away with amongst each other. Another thing that happened before was um, Boo jumped down from the cat tower at like his office and he went to use the scratcher in the living room that he likes to scratch on. And then I don't know what happened, but Richard uh, and two other cats uh, just flew from where they were to where Boo was and they had him surrounded. And I was like, well, what is going on here? So I made them all like leave him alone and um, then he uh, jumped up onto a piece of furniture. I don't know why they did that to him. Maybe they just didn't know what was going on. I don't know, but I was there to make sure that nothing bad happened. Hey, Sammy. It is mail time for the cats. Let's open up the mail and let's see what the cats got. Here's our first card and it has a really cute sticker of a little puppy on it. Then it looks like we have some ornaments and Santa in a wreath. And isn't that pretty with the little white cat looking out the window and the Christmas tree behind him or her? It's a pretty card. Oh, thank you very, very much. This says, thinking of you at Christmas and wishing you happiness always from Nicole LaRue and Zoe, who is 14 and a half years old. And it says, hi to everyone. 
Give a big kiss to Stella, Splash, Simba, Boo, and all the seven kitties. My writing is improving, but not so good as before. It is hard to hold a pen for me. Nicole, I think your writing has improved a lot since your last card. I think you're doing well. I think you're doing great. I'm sending you more and more best wishes for a full recovery from your stroke. And look at this cute sticker. Look, it's Stella's favorite red truck. Isn't that so nice? Thank you so much, Nicole and Zoe, for this beautiful Christmas card and for thinking of us and for your very generous donation and we hope you've had a wonderful christmas and a very happy new year we hope your new year's off to a good start thank you again and we have another card and this card came all the way from england isn't that pretty it says wishing you peace at christmas time that is so cute with the little village and the christmas tree in the middle and look at all the little people that is so cute this says, Lucky Ferals, hope you and everyone have a great holiday and new year. John and I think you will keep all of the cats. You are doing very well looking after 11 cats. Thank you. I am happy to report that all 11 cats are doing fine. And the card says, may your heart and home be filled with all the happiness and love of the Christmas season. Isn't that nice? And I'm not sure exactly who sent this card, but thank you so much for thinking of us and sending us these lovely Christmas greetings. We hope you've had a very Merry Christmas and we send you lots of best wishes for a wonderful new year. Here's another card and I'm sorry if the colors are off on the screen. I don't know what's going on. I feel like it's turning everything blue. And this is from Community Cats in Central Arkansas and this is their yearly magnet calendar this is awesome i always keep one of these in my laundry room and it has all of their little cats on it i don't know the names of the current batch of cats but stephanie at community cats does such a wonderful job with rescuing cats and rehabbing them and finding them homes and <laughs> And she has a wonderful organization there and also a wonderful channel. If you haven't checked them out, search for Community Cats on YouTube. That's the name of the channel. And watch her videos. Her channel and her videos are what helped get Boo into the house because I had to use her scruff carry technique to get him into a carrier. So her content and her channel was fundamental in helping to rescue Boo and get him inside. So thank you so much, Stephanie. And here we have an Amazon package. And this says, thank you for your content. I can't wait to see more. Have a great day from Rachel Markham at DBG Accessories on Etsy. Well, thank you so much, Rachel. And the cat's got an Amazon gift card. That is awesome because I get a lot of cat supplies on Amazon. And that way, when we run out of something, we can purchase it with this gift card. Thank you so much, Rachel. We hope you've had a wonderful holiday season. And we wish you a very happy 2024. And here's another package. What's in here? And this says... Hi, enjoy your gift from Enigma 26A. Oh, and look what we got. It looks like another gift card. And look how pretty it comes in such a pretty box. How does this, oh, does this open like that? Oh, look, it slides open. And then we have a gorgeous Amazon gift card. Thank you so much, Enigma 26A, for this wonderful gift card. I'll load it up onto our Amazon account and it will be put to very good use the next time I need to purchase some cat supplies on Amazon. Most likely it'll be used for some ingredients for making homemade raw food or for some multivitamins for the cats, stuff like that. Thank you so much for thinking of us. We hope you had a very Merry Christmas and we send you best wishes for a wonderful new year. Here's a box now from Amazon. This says, feed those chonky kitties. Love your content. I hope they enjoy. Hugs from DBG Accessories on Etsy from Rachel Markham. 
We have a case of Sheba Perfect Portions Pate, and these are the seafood varieties. So we have salmon, signature seafood, and tender whitefish and tuna entree. And this is what I've been feeding to the cats on fish day. So once a week, they have canned fish. And I've been giving them the Sheba Pate because it is very low in carbs. So we're trying to stick with low carb foods for the cats. And now because of the ulcer in Boo's mouth, which potentially could have been brought on by the fancy feast that they've been eating, we've been switching over to Sheba. So thank you so much for sending this case of food to the cats. They will definitely enjoy this on fish day. Thanks so much. And what do we have here? This is a plaque that says Shiraz with grapes on it. This is a stack of notepads to write on. These are all blank notepads. And this says, hi, Miss LF, just an assortment of cards and pads. Hopefully you can find some use from the Heart Craig. And then here, it looks like a bunch of note cards. Yeah, these are a bunch of blank cards that I can use in the future. Thank you very much, Craig. This is Mary Kay Velvet Scent. And it looks like it's some kind of perfume. It says it has notes of pear, jasmine, and vanilla. That's very interesting. I'll probably pass this on to Grandma Feral since I can't use perfume. Any kind of perfume gives me migraine headaches, so I use essential oils instead. But thank you so much for sending this. I'll pass this on. And this is a reusable shopping bag with an owl on it. And this is an umbrella. And it looks like, looks like there's cats on it. Yeah, look. There's a whole bunch of cats on this umbrella. Isn't that cool? I'm not going to open it because it's bad luck to open an umbrella in the house. But look how cute that is. Thank you so much, Craig. I'm going to keep this in my car so that way when it's raining, I'll have something to use. That was very nice of you to send that. And what is this? It says Clever Kitty Paper Towel Holder. Our Clever Kitty Paper Holder is such a tidy cat. Photorealistic die-cut metal gray tiger cat holds two or more rolls of toilet tissue or one roll of paper towels. That's interesting. This says, Miss LF, I ordered the cat paper towel and toilet paper through a catalog. It didn't turn out the way I hoped. A little chintzy. I thought about returning it, but hopefully you can make it work. Thanks for letting me know, Craig. I'll definitely check it out. I think this is the paper towel holder. And that's what it looks like. It actually reminds me of Little Richard. I think what I'll do with this is I will put it in the bathroom downstairs where I have the cat's litter boxes and where I prepare their food and everything. I think this would look really cute in the corner holding rolls of toilet paper. So thank you so much. And there's also a t-shirt in the box. This is a large t-shirt and it says Land of the Free, Home of the Brave with an American Eagle on it and a flag on the sleeve. And I am going to pass this on to Grandpa Farrell. I think it'll fit him. And I think this is something he'd like. So thanks so much, Craig, for this box of goodies. We hope you had a very Merry Christmas and we hope you're having a wonderful New Year. And we have one more package, and this is from Sharon. So let's see what Sharon sent to the cats. What did they get? Oh, look at this. Isn't this nice? It's nice wintry material. This is a lovely little mat for the cats to lay on. Snowflakes on both sides. They're going to love that. And here's a note, it says, Hi LF, I was making some larger mats and wanted to send some to you. Hugs to your main four and the lucky seven. Happy New Year, Sharon and Sunday. Happy New Year, Sharon and Sunday. Thank you so much for thinking of us and sending us these lovely items. Look at this one. It has Christmas trees on it. This is so nice for like the season right now because these are super warm and comfy and... They're very like wintry looking. Thank you so much, Sharon. And there's another one, it's plaid. And I'm thinking I am going to put these on the floor downstairs because I think the cats downstairs would really 
appreciate these on the floor because the floor can get chilly down there. So I think that's what I'm going to do with these. Look at that one with all of the snowflakes. And this one is a pretty tie dye. And look at this one. It looks like pasta. I think it's supposed to be pasta. I mean, to me, it looks like raviolis and some other kind of pasta. Maybe I should give this one to Grandma Farrell for Marty. Marty might like this one. I'll see about that. Thank you so much, Sharon, for sending these to the cats. I think they are really going to enjoy these. I know that the OG4 have been really enjoying the last batch of Christmas themed blankets that you've sent over to them. And I'm actually putting them through the wash today. We hope you've had a very Merry Christmas and we send you lots of best wishes for a very happy 2024.